I'm Kurt Mitchell. Welcome to the Jimi Hendrix Guitar Method. In this lesson, we're going to cover Jimi Hendrix's style of playing, from uh, his rhythms to his leads. And we're going to take, uh, take the old stuff, the first three albums, uh, in this particular lesson. Um, we're going to start by tuning our guitars. I'm going to tune to half a step down. So if you have a tuner, go ahead and tune one half step down, your whole guitar, because most of the stuff that Jimmy played was half step down. And uh, if you don't have a tuner, I'm going to give you an A or open fifth string. You tune your guitar to that A and come back and check it with me. We should be in tune. Let's get started. <laughs> Before we get started um, with uh, riff number one, I want to I want to talk about the guitars a little bit that we're going to be using right now. Um, Jimmy played Stratocasters almost exclusively. I've seen a picture one picture of him with a Les Paul. Uh, the rest of the time he was playing Fender Stratocasters of of the era that uh, that he was playing in the late '60s, basically, I believe. Um, there's all kinds of talk about the way Jimmy used to modify his guitars and uh, his pedals and all that stuff. Uh, the fact is, if you play like Jimmy, you'll sound like Jimmy. So what we're going to do, it, with the exception of maybe the guitar, which uh, Stratocasters have a unique sound. This is a reissue of a Fender Strat that hasn't been modified at all. And uh, you'll notice it has a volume knob and two tone knobs and a pickup selector. Now, the reason this is important is because you take the tone knobs and you can turn the tone down on the middle pickup. And when you do that, you get this, this sound of him doing his toggle switch thing. So you take it and you flick the toggle switch up and down with the, with the tone on the middle one turned down. And that's how you used to get that toggle switch thing happening. Um, there's a tone knob for the middle pickup and the front pickup on Stratocasters when they come stock. There's a thousand ways to wire them, and the Stratocaster has been the basis for all kinds of guitars uh, since it even came out. Um, so let me show you the guitar we're going to mainly be using. Like I said, this is a reissue. I've had, I put two Fender Jaguar pickups in it, and this is a Stratocaster pickup. And I took out all the tone knobs and gave myself one knob for volume. And uh, I still have the same, uh, five, it's a, I've got a five position switch instead of a three position switch, which Jimmy didn't use very much. Um, Jimmy basically used the front pickup and the back pickup, and the middle one didn't uh, play a big role in his sound, I don't think. Um, when, you, when you have a five position switch, you can get what's called an out of phase sound. Basically, all it does is turn two of the pickups on it w at once. He didn't use that sound very much, so we won't get into it very much. I've also scalloped this neck because I got hooked on uh, scalloped fretboards, and, uh, and I can't play anything else now very well. So if you'll notice, I've scalloped the neck. You'll notice that what appears to be uh, the frets being really high is the fact that I took a file and notched out between the frets, notched the wood out between the frets. I don't recommend you do this unless you really want to do this because you, you can end up having to replace your whole uh, fretboard and the, and the frets. It can be a very expensive job. And, and uh, the first one I did turned out really poorly. So, But I can't play with anything else now, so I, that's what I use. Um, I want to talk about the saddles on the guitar. I've replaced these saddles with graphite saddles. Uh, I'm not sure that they are better or worse than, any, than the other ones, but what they don't have is they have these, the, the original Stratocasters have these little screws that stick up through these saddles that tear the meat of your hand off. And it's very difficult to play when all the meat of your hand's coming off. Um, also, I want to talk about the, uh, the tremolo system in general. The tremolo system on the Stratocaster, the free-floating tremolo, tremolo system that came on a Stratocaster originally, has uh, a place for the strings to slip. Okay, so when you bend that bar down, it's going to slip on the saddle right here, and it, and it slips through the nut up here. And what happens is, you end up being out of tune, severely out of tune, when you get done with the bar. Um, now, I want to show you a guitar that um, that I play now. The guitar that I've modified to the it's 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 like an, a Van Halen style guitar, in that it's a Stratocaster with a humbucking pickup. Let let me show you that, and and I'll see what you'll see what the Stratocaster's evolved into today. And this is what the Stratocaster is basically involved, evolved into. Uh, usually they only have one pickup or maybe a front pickup, but I kept the middle pickup because that's the out of phase sound I like. This switch turn, turns that on and off. And uh, I have a volume knob and no tone knobs. Um, this guitar differs from the Stratocaster in that the neck is not radius, it's flat, right? And uh, I've scalloped this one also. And then there's also one major difference, and that is that it has a Floyd Rose clamp. Floyd Rose invented this thing. Um, to avoid these slippage problems. And what happens is back here at the bridge, 
it locks it down. This screw pushes against this string and locks it down, so it can't go anywhere. Once the string's stretched out, that's it. And up here at the nut, these particular screws right here clamp the string down right there at the nut, so no longer can the thing slip. The string, once it's been stretched out, can't slip at all. You can do this with it. And it goes right back in tune. That's a handy dandy thing. There's one other device I have on this guitar that's called a trem setter, and that's this device right here. What this does is it resists the action of the bar going in either direction. If you can see that if you push it down or pull it up, it has a, it has a tube that holds either side together so that it can't go so that, so that it can't rest up or rest down because it's such a it's such a very very touchy thing. I used to have to play that black Stratocaster with the bar before I got a Floyd Rose clamp, and it took it took quite a bit of doing to keep it relatively in tune. Um, when usually when you touch a bar on a Stratocaster, they just go right out of tune and, and unusably out of tune. So um, no longer do we have to deal with this. But in sacrifice, you sacrifice tone for that because these things have a lot of metal on them and they they thin the guitar sound out. Let's get to uh, let's get to the pedals and the amplifiers we're going to use for this. Okay, we're going to be using two Marshall heads on this particular uh, lesson. The one on the top is what you're going to see pictures of Jimi Hendrix using. Um, it's a '69 Plexi, meaning that the uh, the gold in the middle there is plastic. It's uh, it's kind of a collector's thing, but it's a great sounding head. It has that old warm English sound that nothing else has. Now the one on the bottom is a more recent head, about an '84. It's going to be not a channel switcher, but it's going to have a cleaner sound because I have the top one modified. The bottom head is going to uh, going to supply our clean sounds and some of our semi-distorted sounds. But the main head you're going to be we're going to be focusing on is the one on the top. It's a Super Lead 100 watt. I want to talk about the pedals a little bit. I don't have the exact pedals that Jimmy was using here. I have facsimiles. Um, he was using Dunlop Wawa pedals, I believe, and uh, Crybabies. Dunlop makes them now. Um, and he was using a Muff Fuzz distortion box. I've, I've read in print that he, that he was particularly fond of the Muff Fuzz, the Crybaby, and his Stratocasters and Marshall amps. And these were the, these are the things that he was stuck on all the time. Um, what I'm using is going to be a, uh, it's an FX, it's a, an FX17. It's a Wawa vo and volume pedal, depending upon which, which application you put it to. <laughs> And the thing about it is, is you can adjust it. There's two screws in the end of it, and you can adjust the sweep and the length and how the pedal works. Then I'm running into a distortion box, which is giving me an extra bit of gain. That's basically what we're going to be using for this lesson. Uh, I don't really have anything else plugged in. I got a little bit of chorus on the sound coming through the mixing console, and. Other than that, it's basically a stock sound. It's how you play the guitar, not what kind of equipment you play that's going to make you sound like Jimi Hendrix.
There's a little bit of sustained feedback at the end of this uh, very first note. And what's happening is, when your amplifiers are up so loud and they're right next to you, uh, the, the magnets put off an electrical field that interacts with the electrical field of the pickup and it causes it to sustain a feedback, that coupled with distortion. Um, my cabinet's in an ISO booth right now, so I'm unable to get that sort of sustain when you're standing next to your amp and it's jacked up. If you get your amp, you crank it up and turn up the distortion, you'll get that type of effect. Let's go on, this is sec uh, riff number 10.
we're going to employ uh, something here that, that are called that I refer to as unison bends. In other words, I'm going to take a string with my middle finger and a note underneath it, and I'm going to bend it up to the same note. Okay? Eddie Van Halen does this a lot. Let's do it. This is uh, riff number 14. That's not a very good example of a slide riff. These things are supposed to be used for stuff like this.
sections number 24 and 25, uh, I'm going to show you this stuff going forward. What Jimmy used to do is they'd, they'd, they'd record some stuff forwards, and on Are You Experience, they did this a lot. They flipped the tape over and play it all backwards and then record to that. So let me show you what it sounds like going backwards because we have a four track and we've put some riffs on there. Uh, just me goofing around. And then flip the tape over and you can see what it sounds like. Check this out. <laughs> Um, let's go to section 24 here, riff number 24. Uh, the scrapes are going to be forwards because we're, of course, playing forward in time. Jimmy used to experiment with a lot of things. He used to have somebody tweaking his pedals all the time. Someone was always messing with his stuff and he was always trying for sounds that other people couldn't achieve coming from his imagination. And he, he advanced guitar playing quite a ways in doing so. So let's go uh, to number 24. Thank you. 
There's some pick slides going on over the top of this that would have been overdubbed and it's almost impossible to play them together. We're going to take the bass riff, okay? This is number 41. All you're doing with wah wah pedal is rocking uh, forward. It stays way in the back, actually. So you want, you want only the back part of it, but you rock forward with every quarter note. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Here on riff number 46, we've inserted a flanger into our signal chain and used a delay that I have running through the mixer to put some delay on this. And uh, this is what it sounds like without the flanger. And some delay, here's what it sounds like with it. So let's get to the riff. That about wraps up the riffs. What I want to go into now are some of the chord shapes that he used to use a lot and some of the uh, patterns that he used to use to solo in, okay? Uh, number 49 is going to be an E minor 7th. Let's check it out. Here's an A minor 7th. It's got the same fingering, only down on the 5th fret. Now this is an A major and first inversion, and he used to use these all the time to slide up and around too. So check it out. Same thing only in B. This is an E7 sharp 9. Um, this chord's used a lot. Stevie Ray Vaughan used this, got a lot of these from uh, Jimi Hendrix. He used to use this all the time. It goes like this. Same chord, only in B. Now let's go through some visual patterns on the neck. I'm going to go through them in the, in the main keys that he used to play in. Um, this one's an E, okay? What, now you'll find that the root notes are circled, okay? Here's another one in E in what I would call fifth position. That's position number one, the one we just covered. You'll notice that I'm emphasizing the root notes, too. Here we go. This is number 57 in E. Same thing, emphasizing the root notes, same scale. Uh, these can be moved anywhere, by the way, and I'll show you how in a minute. To, to any key that you want to play in. Here's number 58 in 
number 58. Number 58 is also an E. I'm just going to show you the same pattern that we did the very first one. Same as uh, example 55, only down an octave, okay? to show you that in both positions is because of these open string things. <laughs> And uh, Jimmy used to use that stuff a lot, so, and he sort of pioneered that thing. It comes from the blues. All these scales are basically blues scales with added chromaticisms, and, uh, and they get into various modes. I don't want to get into that. I, don't, I just want to give you the patterns that Jimmy used to use a lot, so if you feel the need to play like Jimmy, but not exactly what Jimmy played, you can use these patterns to help you along. Let's go to number uh, 59. Now that was in G, the same position that I, that I started with and the same one I just played in E, um, only that was, this is in G, and then the root notes, like I said, are circled. So you can slide your hand around on the guitar and play this scale in solo within this pattern in just about any, in, in, as a matter of fact, you can do it in any key you want to. So let's go to number 60, this would be an A, same pattern, watch. Sixty-one, same pattern in C. Same pattern, number sixty-two, in D. That about wraps up this lesson. Uh, we had a lot of fun making it. It's always fun to, to, to pick out Jimi Hendrix. It's too bad he's gone because the way he innovated back then, I'm sure we'd have kept on going and, and there, no telling what he could have done today. Um, everybody that plays rock guitar today seems to have been influenced by Jimi because he was way ahead of his time. Um, remember that there's a, at the end of the song, there's a, there's a song that uh, I've written that is sort of Hendrixy that you can solo over the top of. So you can take all this stuff put it in a pile and use it in, to, to create your own style with, okay? So, until next time, I'll see you later.